Hey, Dr. John here. I received a problem from one of my students who's studying for the MCAT on buoyant force and specific gravity. Uh, and it was a good problem. I thought it would be worth sharing. It pulls together several concepts. So let's take a look at it. It says that a two kilogram object is submerged in an unknown fluid and it doesn't say this here but the unknown fluid has a specific gravity of five and the two kilogram object has an apparent loss of mass of 0 0.5 kilograms the question is what is the specific gravity of the object so when we approach problems like this on the MCAT or, or on any test uh, you, you want to write down all the available information and then you also want to draw a simple picture if necessary to get an imagery of the setup. For me that's very helpful. So let's do that here. So what we have is a two kilogram object and we have a solution that's not water, it's got a specific gravity they say of five and this object is submerged with an apparent loss of 0 0.5 kilograms. So this is the way I see it. Now after we've done this um, we want to focus on what are, what are we looking for? And the question asks us what is the specific gravity of the object? So we're looking for the specific gravity of that. Now the next thing we need to do is define what specific gravity is to move along here so specific gravity is the ratio of density of a substance to a reference substance and that's usually water so we've got a ratio of two densities and density is equal to mass per volume now the density of water is going to be one kilogram over one liter um, we'll use kilograms meters second units. Um, it, we don't have to, as you can see, we could put it as one gram per one ml if we if you wanted to convert all the units for whatever reason. But uh, in this problem we start off with a two kilogram unit um, object, so we'll leave it as one kilogram over one liter. So we've got mass over volume. Mass over volume is, is the specific gravity. Um, and notice that specific gravity is a dimensionless number because the units are going to cancel out since they're a ratio. Okay. So we're looking for the specific gravity and let's just see what in this definition of specific gravity is missing so that we can find that and get our answer. Well we know that the density of water already is one kilogram over one liter so we have that. We've got a, out of the four unknowns we've got an, a third one which is the mass of the object which is two kilograms so the only thing we need to get the answer to this question is the volume of the object so how are we going to do that well we need to use the buoyant force equation Archimedes principle is the buoyant force equation and we'll go into that in a few minutes But let's first get some other information that we can squeeze out because we'll need it for the Archimedes uh, principle, our buoyant force equation. Specific gravity of the unknown fluid is 5. So we can get some density information out of that. Remember that it's mass over volume um, with uh, water as a reference so that we know if, if it's 5, if the ratio is 5, then the density of the fluid is going to be 5 kilograms per liter. And rho, the Greek letter rho, which kind of looks like a italicized P, is our symbol for density that's seen in physics. Okay, so we have that. We have one more bit of information. Now this is important to uh, understand this problem is that it's kind of like how people use heat and temperature interchangeably even when they take physics classes 
because they grew up uh, around people and that used them synonymously and they're not the same thing. Um, this is sort of analogous to that. Mass and force are often used, or mass and weight, especially mass and weight, I mean, are used fairly interchangeably and they're not the same thing. A reminder that mass is in kilograms and that the mass of an object is the same anywhere it's present, whether it's on the moon, earth, or any other planet, or any other place in the universe, the mass stays the same. Whereas force or weight um, is, um, well, force is force. It's a newtons. It's in newtons as opposed to kilograms. Weight is in foot-pounds per second squared, and this is in kilograms meters per second squared. But force is F equals ma, mass times the acceleration. Um, here, it's we're going to be using the acceleration of gravity, which is uh, 9.8 meters um, per second squared. We'll round it off to 10 for this problem. So that's important to distinguish because our, initially our problem says that the 2 kilogram mass has an apparent loss of 0.5 kilograms. So we've got kilograms, but yet we have to use the buoyant force um, which is in, which is a force. So we've got newtons that we're going to be talking about when we when we utilize the buoyant force equation. So let's take a look at this equation and just what is it telling us and how do we need it to get the answer to uh, finding the specific gravity of this two kilogram object. Well, the buoyant force is force, so it's it's going to be force is equal to mass times acceleration. What we've got are are uh, three factors. We got rho, which is the density, milligrams per volume. Then we've got volume, and that's the volume of the object that is displacing the fluid. It's the uh, it's the volume of fluid that's displaced. And then we've got g, which is a, a constant. Um, so when you multiply rho times volume, the, the uh, volume units on top cancel with the volume units on the bottom of density, so we get end up with mass times acceleration, which is force. So if we can f use this equation, if, if volume is the volume of, of uh, displacement of the object submerged in water, if we can put in values for all the other uh, unknowns in this equation and solve for V, then we're, we're home free. So let's see how we'll do that. First of all, before we delve into the mathematics of it, I think it's very important to get a, uh, a visual imagery of what's going on here with Archimedes' principle or the buoyant force. So we have a two kilogram object and it's, it's suspended here, but it would be, if it was sitting on the ground on the earth, it would impart a force against the earth, uh, which is going to be two kilograms multiplied m, which is m, multiplied by g, which is the acceleration due to the uh, force of gravity. So that's going to be in newtons, um, and that would be if the object is sitting on the outside of this tank on the ground. Um, now once we submerge it in water, we're going to have an apparent loss of 0.5 kilograms. So here it would, I've written this as 1.5 kilograms apparently is what it feels like. Now that's again that's mass so we've got to figure out what the force of that is or the weight of that in the water. Now what the buoyant force equation is telling us is that the buoyant force of an object in fluid the force which are these little brown arrows pointing up the force is upward and it's equal to the weight of the fluid that the object displaces. So look in the right corner here and here we've got the, here we essentially have taken a, the volume out of the dense fluid of five uh, kilograms uh, per liter. We've taken out the exact volume of that fluid, that unknown fluid, that this red object has displaced. And the force of this object, if we were to put it on a, uh, a teeter tot, um, would be made by these three 
of variables. We've got the, uh, are not variables, but three uh, factors. We've got G, we've got the density of the water, and we've got the volume. Um, and so that's F equals MA. It's going to be pushing down. That force, if we were to uh, equate it to the pushing up, the upward force of the buoyant force, it's going to be equal. They're going to balance out. So that's the key thing with the buoyant force equation is to, is to see that. So mathematics of this, so getting our answer, is we, gonna, we want to get the real weight. Remember, weight and force are the same. So we get the weight of this uh, object here by multiplying 10 meters per second squared, which is G, times 2 kilograms and that's going to give us 20 kilogram meters per second squared which is 20 newtons so this thing is 20 newtons when it's sitting outside on the ground and the apparent loss we if in the problem was 0.5 kilograms of mass times the same force of gravity 10 meters per second squared which is 5 newtons so the apparent weight of this object in the water this would be 15 newtons 20 newtons minus 5 which is the parent loss. Now we don't need the 15 newtons. I'm just using this to just for completion's sake. What we're interested in is getting volume, and so we're looking for the buoyant force, which is these arrows, brown arrows pointing up, and that's five newton. That's the five newtons here. That's what we're going to substitute in our equation. So. When we go back and take the buoyant force now, we have all the information we need to find V. We've got 5 newtons, which is the apparent loss of force. We Remember, we initially had it as apparent loss of 0.5 kilograms, but it's also 5 newtons. And so we multiply. That's equal to, uh, we put in our density of the uh, unknown fluid which is how we got that by knowing the specific gravity it was 5 we know the G and we solve for V we algebraically manipulate the equation do this and you'll cancel out everything but liters which will be in the numerator so we find that the volume of the object is 0.1 liters alright so now we can go back to our answer, um, or to our equation for specific gravity, and stick in the unknown. That's what we were looking for, was the volume there. So sticking that in, we put 0.1, 2 kilograms over 0.1, and what we find is that the answer is 20. Notice again that the specific gravity is a dimensionless number. So when we go back and look at the uh, problem again, our answer would be D. And that's it. Thanks.